Hey guys, guess what today's video is about? Well, it's not about this piece of wood. It's actually about shingles, rafters, lighting sheeting, building your porch, all that good stuff. Let's get right with it. Guys, I'm going to try to stand this first post by myself. Let's see how it goes. Lifting these six by six posts 12 feet long is not for the faint of heart to do by yourself. And it's not easy to do, so if you can get help, it's best to do that. But I didn't have anyone who could uh, actually help me here, so I just went ahead and done it myself. It wasn't easy, but we got it done. That's all that matters. Got it done safely. I make sure to secure the post in both directions to keep it good and level. Uh, it is very important that the post is level. Uh, if it's out of whack, it will knock the rest of your roof and the rest of the porch out of whack. So take a little extra time, brace it good, get it good and level. Here I get the other post prepped and ready to stand up and uh, I get it stood up and moved into position. I took and measured uh, off of where the post is on the back left hand side off the door and uh, that is what gave me my position of how far I needed to put the post here on the front side. Well, actually I measured from back post to back post on the house side and then I took those measurements and transferred them to the front and did the same thing and then the center one I just centered it in between the two and if you see here where I'm pointing to this post I fastened those posts to the house up at the uh, top plate of the actual house see that hole I drilled that the arrow was pointing and then I run lag screws right in the top plate and I have an actual metal bracket on the bottom side where it fastens to the deck itself and then those outer band boards on the right hand and left hand side we fasten those where we wanted them on the uh, house side and then just put a level on top of them and leveled them perfectly 
and then that gave us where we screw them on the outside post. Hope that makes sense to you guys. And then that gave us a uh, true level band board to start a roof from. Then here we just start cutting out rafters uh, after we get them cut and positioned right. And uh, we start cutting out rafters for the left hand and right hand side. Then we start putting rafters up, 16 inch centers. That's a ridge beam there that the arrow is pointing at. And the way I got where to cut the post off for the ridge beam is I put a joist hanger on the back side where that arrow is pointing and set the two by four in it. And then I leveled the two by four on the side of the post and made a mark where it was level. And then I just transferred that mark around and that let me know exactly where the post needed to be cut off at. Hey guys, at this point you can see we got all the rafters on. And on this I'm doing a do tongue and groove up inside there. And uh, so we took and uh, put collar ties on everything to have something to nail our tongue and groove to. On every rafter we put collar ties up there. And uh, it's coming along nice. It's a lot of work. I'm not filming a ton because I really need to get this done before we get any snow. And I only get a little bit of time here and there to work on it. But I'm putting you guys on time lapse every chance I get. And I hope you enjoy the footage. Hey, I'm going to get back with it. So I nailed some scrap pieces of 2x4 there to the gutter board and that gave me a positive stop so that I could run my OSB sheathing down to that positive stop. And I knew that that would be exactly where it needed to be. It'd be flush with the outside of the gutter board. It ended up getting dark on us. We turned the light on and did a little bit more. But So on today's agenda, uh, we got a little bit to work on the porch here. We're going to try to uh, box in. You can see how I got my two two by eight band boards. I got a two by six. So we're going to box that bottom in and screw it from both sides and that will kind of help carry the load of that outer band board and it'll make it look kind of like a fake beam in a way. Uh, then I'm going to get up on the roof, put the other side of the sheathing on. I got one side on <clears throat> and uh, hopefully we may get some shingles done today. But uh, I'm going to put you guys in time lapse. I hope you're enjoying the content of this build you all along maybe you'll get some tips and pointers maybe you'll see something i've done that'll help you on your build hey come on guys let's get with it Up here on the roof, uh, we already put most of the sheathing on, but uh, I will show you put me the. I'll show you guys me putting the last piece on we have. We actually got to get one more piece. We're a piece short, but I'll show you putting on this piece. Uh, we just made sure we staggered our joints, and just it's just r rinse and repeat. Just nail it down. That air gun is uh, makes a big difference. I would hate to have to put sheathing down without a nail gun.
Well guys, we can't figure out why the compressor ain't working, so you get the gist of it. Put put the OSB down, nail it down. So here the father-in-law starts tearing off shingles because we're tying into the existing roof. We have to tear off in six inch increments, so we'll pull off one full piece, which is 12 inches, and then a half piece, which is six inches, and that'll give us the, the ability to tie in the new shingles with the existing roof. And while he's doing that, I start putting the drip edge on. You see there on the right hand lower screen, I'm putting the drip edge on. Y'all see the pappy in law here laying one down. Um, we end up making a piece of flashing to tuck up under that hip there where, the, where that valley comes down. And uh, we had to cut this shingle to fit up under that edge and that actual flashing you'll see in that picture. Runs down over top of the starter strip. So if any water was to make it, and we'll also silicone that whole leg cell, that whole groove against that flashing of them shingles. Hope that makes sense to you guys. And then from then on out, you're just laying shingles regular. So guys, you can see that we got all the shingles tore off uh, to tie into the existing roof. And then we put our drip edge on, then our tar paper, and then her starter strip, which is just a three tab shingle upside down around the edges and, that, and you let it hang over three quarter inches, half to three quarter inches over the edge and that'll give you a starter's place for you starting your first row of shingles. And then we just run them up and tie it into the existing house, the existing house's roof. And it gets dark on us yet again for another day. But we plug a light up and keep going. I wanted to finish that side. And then the next evening, after I got home from work, been another piece of that flashing you see there. And uh, we started on the other side, put our tar paper and our starter strip down and drip edge. And then uh, as the father-in-law was pulling up the uh, existing shingles like he did on the other side, I went ahead and started laying my first few rows of shingles here. And I just had to cut them and to fit up under that uh, eave where the two overhangs meet up on the house and the porch. And then uh, I think the brother-in-law shows up here in a minute and we kind of just do an assembly line. Father-in-law on one side, brother-in-law in the middle, and me on the edge. So uh, brother-in-law had it easy. He just laid the center ones and nailed them. And I had to do the uh, cutting on the outer edge, and the father-in-law had to do the fitting into the existing shingles. So we all made a good team and knocked it out. As I hope you can see this, I'm going to explain to you how to cut a ridge cap. So when you're cutting a ridge cap, you just take your three-tab regular shingle, and you go from this point of a full, this 12-inch piece, you go from this point to the center, cut a triangle. This point to the center, this point to the center. So if I had my razor blade knife, and uh, we use a pin here as an example, I would cut and lay this down. Cut to there, cut to there. And that would leave like a triangle shape on the top here. And what that will do is, is when you're stacking these, you just, I like to chalk a line from point to point. I lay my first shingle on one side and I go back and put it where I want my last one to end. And however that looks to me, I'll move it around a little bit wherever I want to get it centered. 
and then I'll chalk a line from edge to edge from front to back and then you just lay these like a regular shingle so you bring the next ridge cap you put a nail on you put a nail here a nail here you bring your next one you lay it down to where it comes to the bottom of this transitions bring your next ridge cap down to this transition point and then nail it the same way and you keep going and going and going and on your last one I like to as far as if you're going 10 feet or 60 feet on my last one I like to run it out and then I'll cut this off flush with the color match part so I'll cut it off flush around the bottom of that line there flush around here and then all I'll have is this small piece here and what I'll do with this small piece is, is my last one, I'll just face nail it. And then I'll use some Lexel or some really high quality sealant. Uh, Lexel also makes a, uh, Sasco also makes a product called uh, Through the Roof, which is kind of like Lexel. But it's made, intended just for the roof, uh, using on roofs. And those face nailed nails, just put you some high quality sealant on them and you'll be good to go. I'll get up and show you all what it looks like. Here guys, I'll show you. See that flashing I put in? So there's the flashing I made. This is a piece of the original fascia trim and I just trimmed it to go over that. And you can see I put Lexel all over the nail heads. And you can see this right down here is my starter strip. You can see how that uh, a uh, piece of trim coil comes out on top of that. Oh, the sunset. Let the... Now this may be something y'all get into too. I didn't want to put a, a partial piece on my starter piece. And the math didn't work out from this point to where it starts in to tie in with that roof. The math didn't work out were that um, it would have been a full piece. So what we had to actually do was, if you see, we had to overlap farther than actually what it needs to be for it to tie into that existing roof there, the existing house. Because, you know, this is the double wide. Those were there, so we had to tie this porch into that. And you actually tore a shingle a edge of it there, and I just put some ceiling on it and tore a little hole in that one i mean ain't trying to hide nothing from you we sealed it up good it'll be fine but uh you see here where we tied this in we were laying these up through and then look it wasn't going to match up with the existing roof so what we did was just pull down to match the existing roof and just overlap that one a little extra and you can't even notice it from from down there i mean anybody i mean it would take a roofer to really notice it i think it turned out great We'll get on up here. Let me climb up this ladder. <laughs> All right, guys, here's the ridge cap. I was trying to explain it to you, but you can see it better now. So I started from this end. And like I showed you, the triangles, you just lay them like domino pieces. Just keep going and going and going. And by the time we get down here to where we tie it in, say this was the end of your structure, I tied in here. And now you can see whoever did those, they didn't use a chalk line. That's why you need to use a chalk line. See how crooked that ridge cap is? Whoever put them on from a trailer company, they should have sent him to the house that day. Uh, you can see here, I laid a chalk line and it's pretty straight down through there that's how it should look you can see here that's crooked as a dog's hind leg but you know it is what it is but here when i got to my last one like i showed you i cut it off flush and uh, i face nailed this one and it has lexel sealing on it that ain't gonna leak i'm telling you it's good stuff I hope this guy's uh, guys I hope this is a informative video I know it's not really how to lay shingle video but it yeah I mean you can get the gist of it from this video and it's not hard 
you just lay these three tabs on center three-dimensional shingles are easier if you ask me but these ain't hard either here's a view there's why y'all hear that background noise all the time that would be highway 80 in Kentucky guys here's just a little walk through and I want to try to show you what I did here <clears throat> so from this one by is the original overhang of the house we just tied our rafters in to that one by and if you see oh, you can't really see it but there's a metal joist hanger that two by four is sitting on and uh, a two by four metal joist hanger screwed into that one by and that's what the ridge beam sits on and that we have a collar tie on each individual truss because i'm gonna leave this open cathedral style ceilings and rough cut lumber will come up and it'll flatten out right here and i hope to put a ceiling fan in the center and all that rough sawn lumber will come up and it'll be flat on top it'll have a little flat spot in the cathedral ceilings then we want to run some six by sixes on a 45 kicking out there kicking out there and that'll all be open in there and it'll look real nice but i hope this little walkthrough just gives you a picture of what we did and uh let you see it firsthand here we'll just look at how it butts into the house so if you see we just cut the uh osb i mean the two before the the gutter board we cut it and let it just butt against the house and then the osb board we cut it where it'll come up in there and give us something to put her shingle into and then once we put her fascia trim on i mean that'll look real nice it'll look good and the shingle actually runs up under the soffit on this side so if water was to come off and splash and go under once we get our gutters on this it'll just come down and go right in the gutters and i'll probably put some sealant some silicone based sealant right there on that even after i get my fascia trim on did 16 inch spacing on the rafters and uh i hope y'all if you have any questions leave them below in the comments and i'll try my best to answer them i hope that gives you all just a little walk around we still got quite a bit to do but i wanted to show you what we had done in this video i didn't want to leave it like and it feel like it was a partial video and you guys didn't understand what was going on guys i hope y'all enjoyed this video i hope you found something helpful if uh, you did please hit that like button and if you would subscribe to my channel mm -hmm.